in the period that we're talking about for the exhibition, so that's from the 11th century to the 17th century, travel by water was often much easier than travel by land, uh, which meant that they were re really truly people living in the Netherlands and people living in England were, uh, particularly Southeast England, were, were practically neighbors. What we wanted to do with the research behind the exhibition was show how those relations between Dutch speakers and English speakers uh, affected uh, uh, the writing of literature. Uh, and therefore, by the a broader sense, the production of culture, right? How, how people in their lives and in, in their cultural lives were influenced by those contexts. Well, I think the reason why North Sea crossings matter now and mattered then is that many people have crossed uh, over from the Netherlands and from Belgium. So at this point in time, there are about um, nearly a, a million people, I think, from the Low Countries who are actually working, uh, living in, in the United Kingdom. And that has a, a very long history. And if we want to understand our current situation, we have to go back to the past where, where that really began. So we trace that history of migration, the history of relationship and the history of collaboration uh, back to the medieval and early modern period in this exhibition. We start our, our exhibition uh, with the Norman conquest of 1066. One exhibition item that we have is the ship list of William, of William the Conqueror, uh, which describes the ships that he was given by different noblemen uh, on the continent to set out and conquer England. And among them very prominently the ship on which he sailed himself uh, to England, which was given to him by the Count of Flanders, uh, because he was in fact married to the daughter of the Count of Flanders. On the other side of our chronology, we have uh, King William III, uh, who was a Dutchman, um, uh, came to England, conquered England uh, as well, another William the Conqueror, but then returned to the Netherlands uh, in, in triumph. Uh, and we have a, an image of him uh, uh, returning to The Hague uh, uh, in, in triumph. Maybe the most special item, the, the most valuable item is the very oldest bit of uh, secular literary Dutch, um, the oldest bit of, of non-religious Dutch verse, um, uh, which is, um, uh, was written in England, but in Dutch, uh, by a monk in Rochester probably, uh, on the final leave of an old English manuscript. He had just cut a new nib to his pen. Trying his pen, he scribbled, uh, have all birds, uh, or, or all birds have started their nests now, except you and me, uh, what are we still waiting for? The thing we do in the exhibition also is focus on some of the stories that traveled and the big story um, that became hugely popular in England, and it, uh, a story that started in Flanders is the story of Reinhard the Fox. He takes on royalty, he takes on nobility, and he embodies a kind of spirit of ingenuity, wit. He's always very, very funny, even if he's also very, very cruel. He is unburdened by any sense of human morality. Uh, and uh, I think that has an appeal, uh, although it also has its own problematics, of course. It led to uh, Disney actually putting a halt to the production of a Reinhardt movie that they were planning, uh, which then they used the artwork for, uh, for the Robin Hood movie later, uh, which is why the Disney Robin Hood is a, is a fox. We also have a new uh, edition, rather a new translation of Reinhardt the Fox, by Anne Avery, which is a completely original retelling of the story. It is not trying to be a faithful translation of Caxton, but it really manages to capture the spirit of that 15th century original by Caxton. I hope people will learn from this exhibition that that what I think of as the special relationship, I think of the special relationship as not being between England and the United States, which is such a long way away. I think of the special relationship as the special relationship between England and the Low Countries, separated by a tiny stretch of water, which made travel so much easier. Our nearest neighbors, 
the Bodleian is the perfect place for an exhibition on Anglo-Dutch relations. There are so many wonderful books, maps, documents in the Bodleian that we've been able to pick from. It was very difficult to choose our 80 odd items. We had a much longer list, um, but we've chosen, we hope, the best.